She's like a sickness in my brain. Vision standing by the window pane. She ripples through the blinds and leaves me in a daze. It's in the way her body moves me. The way she grabs me and intoxicates. Until the signals in my mind forget to operate. She put the pressure in a fragile skull. I take my pleasure from my alcohol. She never give it. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and thank you for joining me for another Coffee and Crime Time. Today we are discussing YouTubers behaving badly. It really agitates me when YouTubers do stupid things because it makes us all look bad. Before we get started, I just want to talk about our sponsor really quick for today's video, which is Audible. Audible has been my OG sponsor, one of my first ever sponsors who's been supporting this channel, so we love Audible here. Audible has a special and new promotion for you. If you sign up for your first 30-day free trial, you'll get two audiobooks free. After that 30 days, it's just $14.95 a month. At that point, you'll get a credit for one audiobook a month. You'll also get 30% off of any additional audiobooks you want to purchase, and you'll have access to Audible originals like Chase Darkness With Me by Billy Jensen, which is a book I'm currently reading, and I actually got the audiobook so I could companion read it. So when I'm driving and I have to stop physically reading it, I can pick up in the book right where I left off. You can cancel any time. Any books that you get during your free trial or afterwards are yours to keep forever. They'll stay in your Audible library forever. And if you don't want to use an Audible credit for that month, they'll build up. So as of now, well, as of yesterday, I had three Audible credits, but I'm doing research for Halloween, so I just use those Audible credits right up and purchase some audiobooks that I can listen to while I'm doing laundry or driving or at the gym to help me do research for the upcoming Halloween season of October. There are so many titles in the Audible library, you will never run out of option. There's fiction, nonfiction, true crime, mystery, romance, historical fiction, and nonfiction. There's just so much in there. Autobiographies. I can't imagine a day where I'll go to Audible to try to find a book that I want and be like, oh, there's nothing here that I want because there's just so much. And they're all professionally narrated, so there's not going to be any strange narrations that you just hate to listen to. It's just a lovely service. I've been supporting it for years and they've been supporting me since I've started my channel. So if you guys are interested in trying your first 30 days free of Audible, click the link in the description box and let's get into the video. So let's talk about some YouTubers recently who are behaving badly. And we're gonna start off with Brooke Houts. Now if you don't know who Brooke Houts is or you haven't heard about the outrage that's surrounding Brooke Houts recently, um, I will give you a quick overview, a quick recap. In early August, YouTuber Brooke Houts posted a video in which many believe she was abusing her dog, her Doberman. I'm not going to play the video for you, in my opinion, because I had to watch it a couple of times in order to do this video. It's incredibly hard to watch. It's disturbing for anybody who loves animals. It's, it's painful to watch. So I'm not going to, to play it for you and force you to watch it, but I will link a place where you can see it in the description box if you're interested in going to watch it. But I, I warned you, so. Don't come at me saying, that was a horrible video, why'd you make me watch it? Because I didn't make you watch it. <laughs> I told you that you probably didn't want to. So after many people vocalized their feelings of anger at her treatment of her dog, the video was pulled down and replaced with the same video that just had those clips of her hurting her dog or abusing her dog edited out. But the damage was done. People had seen it. They had screen recorded it. Twitter, of course, Twitter, which is full of people who are just waiting to cancel somebody. But Twitter blew up. Brooke Houts is canceled. Her name was spreading like wildfire and obviously not in a good way. Now what it turns out happened, because at first I was like, this can't be real. She's not actually hurting her dog. She's just doing it maybe for the views or maybe for the drama or maybe to, you know, get some relevance because maybe she feels that she's not getting enough attention on YouTube. Because who in their right minds would look at that video 
and say, this is good to post. Nobody's going to be upset about this. If she was legitimately abusing her dog, would she have just posted that video? But it turns out that she accidentally posted the unedited version. So she'd forgotten to edit those, those scenes out or she'd posted the unedited version of the video instead of the edited version. Either way, she had posted those those clips accidentally. She didn't want you or me or anyone to see them. So if you go on Brooke's Twitter page, she has pinned to the top a lengthy apology that she wrote on the notepad app of her iPhone. And I'm gonna read a little bit of it to you. She said, to everyone who has been commenting on my social media as of recently, anything I say isn't going to make those who believe I'm a bad person stop believing that. And I'm aware of this. I apologize to anyone who has been affected negatively by the footage. First off, I want to address the uncut footage. On the day in particular that the video was filmed, and actually this past week, things in my outside life have been less than exceptional. I'm not going to play the victim card or anything of that sort, but I do want to point out that I'm rarely as upset as what was shown in the footage. The bubbly, happy-go-lucky Brooke that you often see in my videos is typically an accurate representation of me but it's obvious that I'm playing up my mood in this video when I'm clearly actually frustrated. That being said, this does not justify me yelling at my dog in the way that I did, and I'm fully aware of that. Should I have gotten as angry as I did in the video? No. Should I have raised my voice and yelled at him? No. However, when my 75 pound Doberman is jumping up in my face with his mouth open, I do as a dog parent have to show him that this behavior is unacceptable but I want to make it known regardless of what my dog does, I should not have acted that way towards him. Okay, so before we continue with her uh, apology, let me address a couple of things. First of all, she says she's not going to play the victim card, but then she literally does go on to do just that, to play the victim card, and say that things in her outside life haven't been the greatest. Welcome to the world. Welcome to the world, Brooke. We all have shit going on. Then she goes on to say, that she was frustrated by the way her dog was acting. And so basically what I got out of it was, I'm pretending to be happy in front of the camera, but behind the scenes, I'm taking out my anger and frustration on my dog so that you don't see that side of me. That, that's what I got from that. Let me know how you feel. Then she says my 75 pound Doberman's jumping up on me with you know his mouth open. That is what dogs do. That means that they love you and they're happy to see you, and they wanna play with you. They're showing you that they, they love you. He's not trying to piss you off. He's not trying to frustrate you. I'm sure he doesn't want you to mistreat him in the way that you did in that video. He's just trying to make sure that you're happy with him because he could probably sense that you were pissed and frustrated, and he was probably afraid that you were gonna take it out on him, which I have a feeling that Brooke has done this in the past, and I'll explain why to you in a moment. Then she says, as a dog parent, I have to show him that this behavior is unacceptable. And I have a big problem with this because first of all, if you're gonna call yourself a dog parent, then you better treat your animal the way you would treat an actual child. And if anybody ever saw on video a person treating an actual child the way that Brooke Houts treated her Doberman, she would be in jail and that child would be in protective custody. She goes on to say, I want to clarify that I am not a dog abuser or animal abuser in any way, shape, or form. Anyone who has witnessed or heard true animal abuse will be able to clearly see that. My dog, in no way, shape, or form, was hurt by any action that I displayed in this video. I know people are going to say, you don't know how he really feels, and this is true, but if he was audibly and physically in pain, it would be a different story. I also did not spit on my dog, but I understand how it could look like I did. Did I get in his face and take unnecessary actions towards him? Yes, I did. And that was not the way I should have handled the situation. Did I spit on my dog? No. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Allegedly. When she says, I understand how it could have looked that way, it not only looked that way, it sounded that way. What else were you pretending to spit on him? What is, what is the end game to that? What is the end game to that? She certainly did, in my opinion, spit on him but she knows that most of her face was out of the frame during that shot, so nobody can prove that she did, so she can deny it, and nobody could ever say, well, like, technically we saw the saliva, leave your mouth. 
My family and I are in the process of getting him training. The training that I have been looking at for him is very expensive because it'd have to be one-on-one -on -one with the trainer. Ever since he was attacked at the dog park, he isn't okay with being around other dogs. He sticks to me like Velcro if he's in the presence of another dog, even a little Chihuahua. I just can't see him getting what he needs from a group training environment. That being said, I know I personally can learn more effective techniques to get his energy out and keep him disciplined as well. So many things wrong with this paragraph. One, we're in the process of getting him training. The one-on-one -on -one training is very expensive. I don't think he would get what he needs out of group training. Did you try? Did you try to give him group training? And then, and then if that didn't work, then you know that he didn't get what he needed out of it. And then the more expensive option would you know, be a last resort. But I don't think you tried because you just said you know that he won't get what he needs out of group training. Secondly, now you're telling me that your dog has been attacked at a dog park and is terrified of other dogs and now views you as his safe haven so you hit him and yell at him and scream in his face and spit on him allegedly when he he wants to be near you and he's annoying you because you're trying to record a video so this animal trusts you and you're like it's the only person that it has that it feels safe with because it's scared of other dogs and it got attacked so it has probably a little bit of puppy ptsd and you treat him like that I don't think that the dog is the one who needs training, Brooke. I think that you need training. Remember that guy, what was he called? The puppy whisperer? His name was Caesar. He was like the dog whisperer or something, but he would help um, dog owners and I think maybe all animal owners, I can't remember, but he would help them learn how to communicate with their dogs better so that they don't have to like yell at them and mistreat them. Anyone who knows me personally knows I have an immense love for animals, including my own. I would never do anything to purposely, physically or mentally harm any animal. Again, I should not have yelled at him or have been as physically aggressive as I was and I'm fully aware of that. He was not hurt, nor has he ever been purposely hurt by me. I know I'll be in many future situations where he's being physical, but I will not respond this way again. Where he's being physical? He's a dog. He's being physical? She makes it seem as if he's like an abusive boyfriend who she knows is going to hit her again, but she's got to handle it better. It's a dog. He's not being purposely phys physical. He's not like trying to upset mm. Family or friends that have spent any amount of time with Sphinx and me know that we have a trusting, loving relationship. All he wants to do is be by my side, cuddle with me, and be around me, which I love. My love for him is exponential and infinite, and I do everything I can in my day-to-day -day life to ensure that he is living as happily as he can. I'm sorry that my actions in that particular moment did not reflect that. So the thing about dogs specifically, and to some, some animals to some extent, but dogs specifically, it doesn't matter what you do to them. It doesn't matter if you're mean to them. They will still want to be near you and they will still try to get you to show love to them the way that they are showing love to you because dogs are the most loyal, loving creatures on the planet. It doesn't matter how many times you yell at them or hit them or put them outside in the snow for seven hours because you're mad at them for peeing in the house. When you let them back in and they're freezing to death, they will still run over to you with their tail wagging and love you and kiss you and lick you because they want your acceptance and they need it. Actually, they need your acceptance because they need your love to live and they know that you're the one that feeds them and takes care of them. And if you're mad at them, you're not gonna do that. So Brooke's Sphinx being glued to her side and only wanting to be around her is not a sign that there's a loving relationship there. Although I'm not saying that there's not I'm not saying there's not, but that's not a sign necessarily that there's a loving relationship there. That's a sign of a dog who is trying to get approval from its, its owner because he knows that that's the way he survives. Lastly, I don't want to make this statement seem like it's me defending myself because that is not my goal. I do want to point out what actually happened though. My intent by explaining the situation is to give those of you who are rightfully angry with me the explanation that you deserve. I am getting my dog into training and I'm looking at ways to improve how I personally train him at home. I'm sorry that you guys had to watch that footage and were upset by it. And I'm sorry to my dog for raising my voice and acting aggressively. Is your dog reading your Twitter? Is Sphinx like on the computer like, let's see if Brooke apologized to me yet. It, what, what she was doing in that Twitter apology was exactly that, was she was defending herself. She said, I'm not trying to make it seem like I'm defending myself. Not only are you defending yourself, but you're justifying what you did. 
and and I have a big problem with that. I don't care if you're agitated. I don't care if you are having a bad week or a bad month. I don't care because that's your stuff. That has nothing to do with Sphinx. Sphinx didn't do anything. Sphinx was jumping up on you like a dog happy to see his owner. And if you look at this video, guys, she looks at him sometimes when he's just like walking out of the camera. You, you can't even see him. He's not even on the screen. He's just like walking and she looks at him with such hatred. I don't think that Sphinx needs training. I think Brooke needs anger management. She clearly has some issues going on that may come from a multitude of things going on in her life. I don't know what's going on in her life and I'm not going to pretend to. But the fact is you can't take that out on people or animals who are helpless and depend on you. To me, abusing a pet, a pet that trusts and loves you is on the same you know, level as abusing a child. And don't come for me guys. It's not the same thing at all. I'll, I'll keep it simple, okay? Just so nobody comes, comes after me and, and says I'm comparing dogs to children. To me, if you hurt a child or an animal, I think you're irredeemable. I think you're a bad person because only a bad person could do something to harm a child or an animal who's unable to ask for help, who's unable to defend him or herself, who's literally created, like children and animals are literally created to be so freaking cute that you want to take care of them and, and allow them to survive. That's the point, like babies have these, you know, adorable features and these huge eyes and they look so cute and you're just like, oh my God, you're so cute, but that's purposeful, that's evolutionary. A baby's made to look so adorable so that you will take care of it and not hurt it and allow it to reach adulthood where it can then take care of itself. That's the whole point. Like if somebody can, can go against their biological instincts that the universe is telling them this thing is so cute and so innocent and so helpless, you need to care for it. And they're like, no, I'm gonna hurt it instead. You're a bad person as far as I'm concerned. Now is Brooke Houts a bad person? I'm not gonna say if she is or isn't because I, I don't personally know her. Okay, so Brooke does this, she puts it on, on YouTube, people see it, and then obviously there's an outrage, everybody's adding the LAPD on, on Twitter, everybody's adding PETA, like they're gonna do anything, and, and everybody's pissed. So LAPD looks into it, okay, we're like, this is great, they're gonna see the video, there's proof, like there's literally proof of what she's doing to her dog and how horrible it is, there's proof. So it's gonna be a wrap. They're gonna arrest her or at least take the dog away from her. But a couple of days ago, the LAPD, a spokesperson commented that the Animal Cruelty Task Force determined there was no crime committed against her Doberman. The spokesperson also said that they had seen the video and that her actions didn't rise to the level of animal cruelty. So now people are pissed about this. And, and I'm pissed about this too, because at the very least, that dog should have been taken away from her or she should have had to have gotten some like anger management classes or something before the, the LAPD was just like, all right, cute, go on with your life, keep doing what you're doing. So I have three dogs and they're little dogs. I have Rosie, she's a Morky, and then Vale and Doc, they're Havanese. They're little dogs, but Doc's a little bit bigger and Rosie's like the littlest one. But let me tell you guys how hard it is to record a video with, with all three of the dogs. So right now they're sitting quietly on the couch, all of them just laying quietly on the couch being good. But as soon as somebody walks by or drives by with a car that's kind of loud, they will just start barking their heads off. And this happens probably 19 to 22 times in like an hour that I'm recording a video. It can get frustrating, really frustrating, especially when I'm on a time limit or I'm on a roll and I'm trying to get a thought out and then they bark and then I have to like calm them down and put them back on the couch so that they're not like with their, their little nails all over the, the floor. I have to put them back on the couch and then I sit back down and I'm like, wait, what did I just say? Where did I leave off? So then I gotta go on my camera and find out where I just left off. So it can be incredibly frustrating. I sometimes yell at them. Like if I posted an unedited version of my video accidentally, first of all, it would be like four hours. But second of all, you would see me 
literally yelling at them sometimes like, are you kidding me? Like that, just probably at that, that, that volume and, and still looking at the camera. I'm not chasing them around the house, grabbing them, holding them down, screaming in their faces and spinning on them. I'm not literally taking my hand and swiping it at them where, you know, they're going to go flying across the room like she did with Sphinx. And God forbid Brooke should ever have children because they annoy the crap out of you on a daily basis. But you can't yell in their face while you're holding them down. You can't spit on them, allegedly. You can't throw them across the room. If she thought it was bad that Sphinx was jumping on her face with his mouth open, try having a two-year-old who literally spits on you just to laugh about it or will headbutt you in your face while you're wearing glasses just because you make a funny sound when that happens. Okay, it's annoying, but you can't do that to them. So if she has no self-control when it comes to her pets, would she be able to have self-control when it came to a child, especially a small child who often gets in the way of things that you wanna do or makes your life seem harder? So that's concerning and it's obviously an issue. And when the LAPD says that what she did in the video does not constitute animal cruelty, then what does? What would have to be enough proof for them or what would constitute animal cruelty for something to be done? Would a Sphinx have had to have died? at the hands of his owner in order for them to say, yeah, that, that was probably animal abuse, but by then it's too late because the dog's gone. Listen guys, like I said, I saw this video. I saw it. She literally slapped her dog in the face, grabbed him roughly, held him down, screamed in his face, then spit on him, allegedly. And at times, even when he wasn't doing anything, probably when he just got too close to her, she would raise her hand at him like, and he'd flinch, which leads me to believe that this is not the first time Brooke has been overly aggressive with her dog. At one point, he gets too close to her and she literally like throws him across the room and then she goes after him and in the reflection of the TV, you can see what appears to be her kicking him as she continually berates him and yells at him. Now once again, Brooke says that, um, you know, that that didn't happen. She didn't spit on him, she just yelled at him and you know was a little rough with him. She would probably deny kicking him even though, like I said, you guys who have the, the stomach to watch the video, you watch the video and you let me know what you think. Is she kicking him or hitting him in the reflection of the TV screen? Nothing's gonna happen to Brooke, but hopefully she'll learn from this and realize that the eyes of the nation are upon her. And, and I think that she's gonna have a hard time getting her career on YouTube up and going again because the internet may have a short memory when it comes to a lot of things, but when it comes to physically abusing an animal, I feel like people kind of don't forget that. Next, I wanna talk about the Ace Family. So the Ace Family is made up of Austin McBroom. He used to play college basketball, his wife, Catherine, and they have children. I'm not gonna talk about the children pretty much at all in this because I don't feel like those children ever were able to agree to be on YouTube and be under you know, the public's scrutiny. But anyway, the Ace Family, they're like a family vlog and they, they've had some issues in the past. They've had some scandals. You either really love the Ace Family or you really don't like them at all. Some past scandals include a charity basketball event that they held. <laughs> now the winner of the charity basketball game was going to be given $100,000 to donate to um, the, the charity of their choice. One of the basketball teams was led by Austin McBroom himself, and then the other was led by, oh, I forget, oh, it was Rice Gum. So, you know, either Rice Gum or Austin would have the opportunity to be handed a check for $100,000 and give it to a charity of their choice. But when the winner was holding the check in a picture, it was only for $75,000. So a lot of people were like, wait, we thought it was $100,000 to charity, so where did that other $25,000 go? Additionally, these hold tickets to that event for 45 bucks a pop. And in the pictures, it looks like they had a pretty, you know, full house. And the, the center that they had it at, which was called the Galen Center, they held it at the Galen Center, and the Galen Center could hold over 10,000 people. So technically, if they had sold 10,000 tickets at 45 bucks a pop, we're looking at like $460,000 that they made from that charity basketball game. So it's not really a charity basketball game if you're creating such a big monetary profit for yourself. 
Additionally, the charity basketball game was live streamed and there was several ads, so they made AdSense off of it. So when, you know, I appreciate the hustle. I appreciate anybody who wants to go out there and work hard and make their money, but then call it what it is and don't put it under the guise of a charity event when really the main purpose is to make yourself way more money than you ever donated to charity. Then there was the alleged staged robbery of their house. Some people believe that the, the Ace family set up this robbery on their house, that it never happened, and there's a lot of reasons that people believe that. Well, first of all, it just was odd the way that they were recording everything. They were like, oh, our house just got robbed. They were recording, walking through it. Their poor little daughter was like, oh, my room is a mess or something's going on with my room. And, and Austin was like, well, that's because the robbers came in and came in our house, which clearly scared the crap out of her because she was young. I think she was like four years old or something. And you're making your small daughter feel unsafe in her home now. Like she probably didn't need to know exactly what happened, that somebody had come in and went in her room and, and robbed your house. But regardless, they call the police and then the police officer, he's like, oh, are you putting this on YouTube? Can I be in it? And then he's like, you know, to the camera. It's, a, it's an odd way for a police officer to act, I suppose, if they're at, at an alleged crime scene, you know, trying to process evidence and things. Additionally, in previous vlogs, Austin and Catherine made it clear that they had cameras in every room of their house that were connected to Austin's own phone and he would get notifications if there was any sign of movement. Yet they were robbed and there's no camera footage? You don't know who did it? Because I'm sure if there had been camera footage, they would have put that in the vlog. So lots of people think it was just staged for views. Trisha Paytas actually made a video talking about it and she was like, this guy is posing for a thumbnail with his crying daughter in his arms while the, after, right after the house is being robbed. Like who does that? Who poses for a thumbnail in their home after it's been robbed and then makes a vlog about it? So a lot of people think that it was fake. Then there was the lollipop thing. So <laughs> Austin was in a Spencer's or something like a Spencer's with his young sister-in-law. So Catherine's sister, who I believe is about six or seven. And Catherine's sister wanted a lollipop that was shaped like, okay, so just imagine a lollipop that Spencer's might sell and what it might be shaped like. Anyway, she wants this lollipop and it's clearly out of her reach. Like she's trying to hop up to get it because it's on a top shelf or like higher up, probably so kids can't reach it. She's trying to get it and he's like, oh, you don't want that, ha ha ha. But then in the next scene, she has it in her hand. So he would have had to have physically gotten it down for her and given it to her. And then he's like, show Catherine what you've got. So now he's having her wave it around to show her sister. And they bring it up to you know the checkout counter and he's like, oh my God, I can't believe she's making me buy this. Are you really making me buy this right now? Oh my God. <laughs> so clearly Austin thinks this is like cute. He thinks the fans and stands are gonna get a real kick out of it. Like he's getting a kick out of it because he's just dying laughing. And a lot of people had a problem with this because they didn't think that he should have encouraged that. And not only that, but they didn't think he should have recorded it and put it on a public platform where other people can see it, possibly other people who are predators or parasites of children. People really didn't like it in the end when he was like, okay, put that in the bag. This is your little secret. It was creepy when he said it. And then he's like, well, I had to buy it or she said she was gonna steal it. So you have like so many issues here. You are the adult. If you know that a child wants a lollipop that's inappropriate for them to have, you say no, you don't grab it down from the top shelf where she can't reach it. And then you don't say in front of her, well, I had to buy it because she was going to steal it if I didn't, because now you're reinforcing in that child's mind that if they want something, they're going to get it one of two ways, either stealing it or threatening to steal it so that you'll buy it for them. And listen, these, these things like the alleged house robbery, I know that YouTubers can sometimes do things specifically for views. The only problem I had was like bringing the kids into it, I guess. And the whole Spencer's lollipop thing, listen, I have young, I have young children. I know that they do crazy things sometimes and you want to laugh about it. Aiden once had a stuffed octopus and he gave it a name that was really funny, but super inappropriate for, you know, a five-year-old at that time to say. 
So I didn't record him saying it and then put it on social media. I recorded him saying it so I can play it at his wedding, but I didn't record it and put it on social media for other people to see just because it's like certain things are funny like privately in the confines of your own home, even though you know they may be inappropriate or maybe viewed as inappropriate by other people, but you don't put those things on social media. It's, it's, it's just, not, it's not good. It's not good. It's not good, Austin. But I'm not gonna judge him too harshly for these things. Um, I, I mean, I, I do judge him harshly for some of them, but you know, people make mistakes. Now we have this, this new thing where the Hayes family just moved into a new house gorgeous house. I'm so happy for them. It, it looks like it's in the uh, Hollywood Hills. It's gorgeous. So they posted a video. It's about an hour and 10 minutes. And <laughs> first thing I noticed about the video, because I, I had to watch it, was how many ads were in there. I lost count of the ads, but I believe there was anywhere from 19 to 21 ads. It felt like there was one every two to three minutes. And listen, like I said, I am not ever going to downplay or question somebody's hustle. I don't ever wanna you know, make it seem like I'm judging people who wanna make money off of YouTube. I wanna make money off of YouTube, but even me and my videos are often over an hour, sometimes an hour and a half. I would never put that many ads in my video. That's greedy and that's disruptive to the flow of the video and that's disruptive and rude and disrespectful to your subscribers and the people who are watching this video. That's too many ads, in my opinion. I'm not gonna judge anybody. If you wanna put 50 ads in your 15 minute video and people wanna still watch it, that that's up to them. But it just seemed greedy in a video where they were walking around their, their like huge mansion, showing how many cars they had, how many designer bags they had, how many pairs of shoes they had. It just seemed a little greedy. So in this video, for some reason, Austin McBroom takes a jet ski, Cause yeah, everybody's got jet skis just sitting by their pool and he puts it inside of their infinity pool and he starts driving around in it. So this is obnoxious to me. Like this is something that you would see, I don't know, like a college kid doing in like a National Lampoon's movie or like a Van Wilder movie. Like that's how I, I envision it. Not a grown man who, you know, paid for this house and probably doesn't want to see either the pool or the jet ski get damaged. But in this video, Catherine's yelling at him like, stop, stop. But I, she's laughing too, so I don't think she really wants him to stop. And there's water sloshing over the infinity pool because it's an infinity pool. So typically with an infinity pool, you're gonna have the pool, a lower ledge where the water can go over it. That way when you look out, it looks as if it goes on for infinity. And then underneath there's gonna be some sort of reservoir to hold the water that's spilling out of the pool. And then I think it recycles it back and puts it in the pool. But there was so much water that was coming out, obviously, from a jet ski, which is meant to be in the ocean, that it was going into that reservoir, filling up that reservoir, and then continuing down the hill. And through here, take another moment over here to appreciate this beautiful sunset. Uh-oh. Austin, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> no, why? Oh my God, Austin! point after he's done um, jet skiing in the pool and he seems very um, hyper and he tells tells Catherine you know I just want to live you know living your best life and um, life's too short and live life to the fullest and I'm just trying to experience everything and then he he tells whoever has the camera give me the camera give me the camera and then he starts talking about the view and he's like look at the pool look at the house look at the view and as he's saying that you can literally hear somebody yelling stop in the distance. So who's yelling stop? No, that's not living. <laughs> hey family, you only live once, like I always say, so why not live it up? Look at this, for where I am. Throw me the camera, throw me the camera. Throw it, throw it. Just, man, just look at this. The jet ski, the pool, and that view. So I gotta figure out how to get out of here, because I got my shoes on still. <laughs> the pool, and that view. I'm gonna play you another video that was posted on Twitter and then that will answer your question. Oh 
So this video was initially posted by Joseph Cabrera who said he was at his uncle's house and while they were there for his dad's birthday party, the water from the McBroom pool started coming down and causing a mudslide into these people's private property and it actually ended up killing the grapevines that his uncle had and you know worked on and probably took a lot of pride in. And Rich Lux, who obviously covered this as well, he speaks Spanish, I would assume, because he knew what they were saying, and he said that the woman was saying, you know, we've called the city, they've done nothing. So this was clearly happening before, or had happened before. And the city was called, and they did nothing. And you could say, and you could argue, that Austin didn't know that was happening, and if he did know that he would have stopped or apologized. But I would take your argument of that and push it to the side when I tell you that Austin and Catherine both got on Twitter to basically post about how little they care about other people's feelings. So on September 3rd at 12.05 p.m., Catherine just tweeted a bunch of smiley faces and somebody said, what's happening? And then Catherine responded, oh, nothing. People just hate to see happy people minding their own business, living their life and staying in their own lane. So I'm just smiling at them. And then Austin wrote one day ago, so this was two days ago because I screenshotted this yesterday. He said, being fake mad really does exist, huh? Somebody responded to him and said, if someone did this to your property, you guys would make a whole documentary about it. Stop always acting like the victims when you guys mess up and just take some responsibility for once. Smash my head? No, it's shaking my head. I always think SMH means smashing my head. Somebody else responded to him, the fact that you can't even be a big enough person to admit you messed up shows your character. I really hope I never have to deal with you people living in San Diego. As my mom would always say, those with new money who spend it like it's old money end up with no money. So and a lot of people are saying that basically. A lot of people are saying this is what happens when young people get a lot of money really quickly. They do stupid things and they act in a, in a stupid way. And I, I agree with that in, in some some circumstances. I think there's tons of young people, like look at Natalie Portman. I mean, Natalie Portman was rich and famous at a very young age and she always kept a good head on her shoulder. And you don't hear about her jet skiing in her pool or making fake charity basketball games. But the point is, I think it's a personality thing. They've gotten away with a lot of stuff. They've gotten away with a lot of stuff and they have managed to continue their content and keep their following. And it doesn't seem as if their, their pocketbook has been hurt by their scandals and them being caught doing things they maybe shouldn't have been doing and being called out on it. So they will leave that thinking, I'm invincible, I'm untouchable, I'm so big, I'm so important. People love me so much that nothing will ever happen, no matter what we do. We could do anything and nothing will ever change that. So when people have that kind of mentality, they, they begin to develop a callousness towards other people's feelings. They begin to develop an indifference towards other people's feelings. And listen, I have neighbors like this. I have, obviously they're not jet skiing in their pool because we don't have money like that. We're not living in a neighborhood where we got infinity pools and jet skis, but they're thoughtless and they play their music very, very loudly during the day, at night, all the time. And if you call them out on it or ask them not to play the music or say that it's kind of ridiculous that the music has to be that loud in the middle of the day or at 10 o'clock at night, they'll say, well, maybe you should move then. And those are the kinds of people that I believe the Ace family is. They believe that they have a right to be there. They're the only people that matter. So anybody else who's not a fan of the way they do things should just move. They're just staying in their lane, minding their own business. They're not staying in their lane though. They're not minding their own business. When you do damage to somebody's private property, you may not have liked that you got called out on Twitter about it, but you go to that person's house, you apologize and you pay for the damages and then in the future, you don't jet ski in your pool anymore, period. And instead of doing that, they basically just got like sassy on social media. We don't care. We're just minding our own business and people are mad about this. And listen, is this a big deal in the end? No, but the point is, those who have a great amount of influence 
should not abuse it. Those who have a great amount of influence, in fact, should act above reproach more than regular people because they're being watched and there's people who look at them as role models. The Ace family thinks that people are latching onto this because they're jealous of their fame and their fortune. And I'm not jealous at all of their fame and their fortune. I aspire to have an infinity pool one day. That would be amazing. I aspire to have those opportunities. And I don't necessarily think that Austin and Catherine are bad people. I think that they're people who got caught up in what would appear to be a quick rise to fame and they need to just humble themselves a little bit. They need to humble themselves a little bit and try to be better neighbors because in the end, that's what this is about. It's about being somebody that a lot of eyes are on and showing all those eyes how you treat other people and how you handle conflicts in a mature and responsible way. So let me know what you guys think. I don't know what's going on. So the original guy who posted it on Twitter, the video, he took it down. And I'm wondering if they're maybe settling it with the McBrooms, like privately behind closed doors, which honestly it should have happened to begin with. And I do believe that those people whose grapevines got destroyed, they probably could have just like walked up there and been like, hey, you know, your jet skis like drowning our grapevines. Can you stop? or like help us out here and compensate us for it. Maybe that would have been better than just calling the city and, and not directly talking to them. I don't know if this family ever spoke directly to the Ace family. There's no way to know that. I have a sneaking suspicion they did not because when the guy who posted it was asked, well, did you guys go and talk to the family? He said, I don't know if they've talked to the family, but I do know they've gone to the city a couple of times about this. So I have a sneaking suspicion that they didn't talk to the Ace family, but even so, Catherine and Austin should have been the bigger people. Like I said, they are the ones who are being watched. They are the ones who are setting examples and being role models for people. So instead of taking to Twitter and being super petty and super sassy, they should have just handled it with the family. They should have taken care of it. They should have apologized, honestly, because even if you didn't mean to do that, you did it. So you should have just apologized and moved on. So what if you were called out on Twitter? So what if they embarrassed you? You make it right with them and I guarantee you those people will make a public statement that you made it right and you, you're you good in their book now. And then the whole thing goes away. But the way they've acted and the way they treated it, like well, this is beneath us. We shouldn't even have to deal with this stuff. Why are people so mad about nothing? That's the real crime in my opinion. So let me know what you think about YouTubers behaving badly. <laughs> I have another coffee and crime time coming out for you in a couple of days. I'm gonna mostly be, mostly, I can't talk. I'm gonna mostly be focused on coffee and crime times for the rest of the month. I'm working really hard on Halloween, so I wanna make sure that all my, um, my content, basically like my research and everything is done for Halloween. So when October comes, all I have to do is sit down and record and edit and I can get the four videos up a week. So I'm really excited about that, but it's just going to be coffee and crime times probably for this month, but I'll make sure that they're, they're plenty long for you if you want. And I'll make sure that we have lots to talk about. There's a lot going on. You guys have been sending me stories and I'm working on more videos. Thank you so much. Stay kind and stay beautiful. Bye.